Oh, can you make a new palette with greens and blues? Ooh. Ooh. That's good. I might be doing that already. I might be doing me. that. I mean, let's, let's give a bit of like a cool sneak peek. Hello. Yay. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for coming. I mean, it's it's a long time coming and we've been planning this for a very, very long time. Yes. We've known each other for quite a while. Yeah. I mean, not too long, but it feels like a lot has happened. A lot since, has happened. Since I, since I met you. Well, also you have grown. Mm -hmm. I mean, you were pretty big before, but bigger now. Bigger-ish, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of kisses. Um, yeah, so they were the only ones who were allowed in here. Mm -hmm. Right, doors closing, dogs in. I feel like Cosmo's going to cause trouble, but for now they're the only ones allowed. allowed he is a troublemaker. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're from Jordan. Mm -hmm. You started out as an artist. As an artist, and yes. And you have some beautiful pieces of art on your wall. What made you move into makeup? <sighs> so... When I, I mean, I've been doing art my whole life. I've been drawing since I was a child, and then I did art competitions, which, you know, I've won two art awards, one when I was like a child and one when I was in my early teens. Um, and then I got into painting. So that was very special for me because I got to combine um, different elements that I loved, which was always portrait based. So I would draw and paint a lot of portraits. So it was always a focus on the face. And then eventually I was experimenting with photography, with different mediums. And obviously as I did photography, I would do makeup on those models because it only ah, made sense. Right. So that was like my gateway to makeup was doing makeup on the models before I took the photos. So when was that? Um, I would say 2014, 2014. And then it, it kind of took off in 2015, 16. With Instagram, and keep in mind that was the time where Instagram was booming in terms of beauty, and but it was a lot of like clickbaity um, beauty tutorials and a lot of catchy videos. So I decided to get into. I was like, you know what, I can do this, and I love doing what I do, and I can focus on beauty in a, from a different perspective, from an art angle. And I launched my YouTube channel as well. I mean, it was always there, but I. I kind of changed the direction of it and everything took off from there. I love your campaign that I missed out on. Oh, oh so this is interesting. Yes. Stuck. So Caroline was supposed oh. to be the sixth girl model yes. in my hero line campaign. But the funny thing is, I mean, obviously she, she couldn't make it and it was... I was very, stuck in Uganda. She was stuck in Uganda. I mean, what, what are the odds? Oh, no. So she was supposed to be in the hero line campaign. But um, I took her place. <laughs> I took her place. So if she and it is stunning. If she was in the campaign, I probably wouldn't have been but in you, the images. Yeah, so, so that's really good. In, so everything happens. Sad. You know, everything happens for a reason. No, but you're going to be in my next campaign, which is so exciting. I can't wait for you guys to see what I'm working what you're on. What you are creating? Mm -hmm. It's all in front of Caroline, so we can see it's all the secret. the new colors, the new like products and and I, I'm testing a few things on her because I always love to get my friend's opinion I mean that's very important for me when I'm creating something is that yes I know what I like but she needs to be able to use it and be comfortable with it and um, yeah um, but mm -hmm. can we please talk about uh, your palette because palette. I have your palette mm -hmm. and it is beautiful mm -hmm. A bit confusing. Okay, so this is great to talk about because Caroline told me that you know she she wants to know more about how to use the palette and she finds it a bit confusing and um I mean I know I shouldn't but I do no no I, I love that and that's very important because I want to hear what how you would approach it. Okay, so basically, I mean I see you wearing the blush all the time because you do love a rosy blush. You just have to swirl your brush in between all the colors and it's super, super easy because I don't think I talk about the formula a lot, honestly. The formula is very forgiving. It feels like a very silky face powder. So you can't ever go overboard with color and you can't ever like do too much where you can't control it and you can't go back. It blends itself. It's very, very, very forgiving and wearable. 
So, I mean, you can really start with the blush okay. and just go on your cheeks. Um, I mean, I and then to now. smile or not to smile? That is the question. I mean, I don't believe in like smiling for a blush, but it depends on, on how you want your application to be. So if uh, Cosmo's having like a <laughs> panic attack, I think in the background. So no smiling? No smiling. Cosmo. That's Cosmo. <laughs> so, oh, that's Timmy. Okay, sorry. So I would go high up and kind of get on the temples more, if you can turn this way. Um, I mean, you're already wearing blush, so I don't like to put makeup over makeup, but this is how I would approach it. I'm not it. wearing blush. Oh, you're not wearing blush? No. Oh. This there is my go. natural pink cheeks. This is her, her natural mm -hmm. pink cheeks. So, I would put the blush high up if you want to create more of a lift. And then, because see, then you create that beautiful flush of color that goes high up. And then... Do you ever wear this? I wear the Boy Wonder all the time. I mean, this is why I created Boy Wonder, because... I wanted the most feminine color in the palette to have a masculine name. And when I thought of Boy Wonder, I thought of like having a healthy flush on the face, on the cheeks from being out, to, out in the sun and being active, which I'm not. <laughs> well, having said that, that picture mm -hmm. of you in your Halloween costume, oh, yeah. whoa. So have that, you seen that? So that, my Spider-Man costume took two months to make and it was supposed to be for something really, really cool that I, that, you know, I was going to do on Halloween, but, um, wow, it didn't work, but I still got, got to have fun with it. Going back to this. Yes. So sorry. <laughs> I really feel like you can just completely get the seamless blend and I really want you to dig into it and use it more and like, t tell me what you think okay. after you've really just worked with it. Okay. So we started quite high. Yeah. Quite high. Middle. Yeah. Middle I would say up to the middle. Really? Yeah. Okay. I mean, there are, yeah, there are no like specific rules, but I would say up to the middle of the eye. So like from here all the way to here. Um, another color I love is tan lines, which is that beautiful tan that blends into a white. And obviously the more you blend it to the white, the more you get a lighter application, the more you can blend the edges. Is the white like a highlighter? It's a highlighter, yeah. It could be a matte highlight. So you can, okay. I can use these two shades. So tan lines and wet paint to lighten any of the other shades, which is like really cool if you find some of the colors intense. And this is basically going to be your skin tone. So it's not going to add color. It's just going to... Oh, get rid of... Yeah, just even things. Yeah, or... even things out and create this nice canvas. I don't know how we got into makeup application. We oh, weren't we supposed weren't gonna to, we weren't going to do makeup application. Until but... I told you I was confused. Yeah. Confused. She's, she's tricking me. <laughs> and a trick that I always love to do, a bit on the nose. Ah. <clears throat> and I love that, you know? So that, so, um, so we just did a neutral on the eyelid so is that as far as you would go with me on a daily basis then <clears throat> if it was just me i would say so i mean you don't you don't wear a lot of makeup i so. don't no just mascara Tinted moisturizer and i love that yeah so what do you feel like what's your everyday go-to mascara definitely um i've got a few <coughs> mascaras um and i just sort of jump from one to another have you got a favorite one at the moment and do you go through favorites mascaras yes I'm very, I'm not a very great judge of mascara. I do have some favorites, but you know, I'm not wearing it myself, so I can't really see the full effects, but I love, huh? do you wear it at night time? No, never. No. I love so the NARS Climax. Yeah. I love the NARS Climax mascara. I love the Charlotte Tilbury full fat lashes. I think that's a great one. I think that's probably the one that I use. Most. I love that one. Yeah. The Pillow Talk one is really nice, but I like the full fat lashes. I think that's my favorite of hers. Um, and I use their uh, tinted moisturizer. Really? Yeah. Ah, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the glowy one. Yes. Uh, but you know what? I'm not, I'm not super specific with mascara because I end up putting a bit of um, a light layer of mascara than I do individuals. Right. But I barely do that on Caroline because she has beautiful long lashes, so she doesn't, she doesn't need. But sometimes when we do, we just do like the outer corners. Yeah, so. I'm not a big fan of fake lashes. Mm-hmm. I'm not a big fan of extensions. 
But I know it helps a lot of people, and if done right, like lash extensions. But lash it's serum works so easy and works really quickly. Yes. So someone's asking, is the makeup available in Australia? So I, I forgot to talk about a very, very special point. So Hindash Cosmetics is available on Cult Beauty if you're in the UK and in Europe. And actually Cult Beauty is pretty much international. So Cult Beauty is incredible. I mean, I've always shopped at Cult Beauty when I first started. They carry a lot of amazing brands and I'm so happy to have my brand at Cult Beauty. So excited. And we just launched in Beautylish for anyone in the US, which is the majority of my audience so and my followers. That's an online makeup. Beautylish. Beautylish. So it's an online beauty retailer and they carry so many beautiful professional brands, amazing brushes, a lot of really, really, really beautiful makeup. And they're, they're honestly, their customer service is insane. I used to order from them all the time when I was building my kit and it would take like three, four days to ship to Dubai, which is, I mean. That's incredible. It's incredible. And they're in San Francisco. So Cult Beauty, Beautylish, and if you're in the GCC, it's Unas. And they right. do like two hour shipping. If you oh, remember. I know. Yeah, I love Unas. I know. Oh, can you make a new palette with greens and blues? Ooh. Ooh. That's good. I might be doing that already. I I'm might be doing telling. that. Okay, so the new palette, I mean, let's, let's give a bit of like a cool sneak peek. The okay. new palette um, is going to be very special. It's also derived from like my art background. So this is basically like chapter one. And the next palette will be chapter two. So it will be, I mean, the only thing that I can say is it has a romantic vibe, but not in the way that you would think of romance. So I'm not reds and pinks, Valentine's. It's not, it's not like your typical romance type of vibe, but it, it is like the romantic beautopsy. If that, that's the most, that's the biggest say. sneak peek I can give away. Um, so, so greens I'm and blues, so, watch this space? Or? If, yeah, if you like greens and blues, I mean, watch, watch this space. Uh, I, got, I got a lot, a lot of comments about making a shimmer palette. Yes. I mean, honestly, shimmer was supposed to be one of the first things that I do. I mean, if, I mean, you guys know me, I love, I love shimmer. I love shimmer on the eyelids. I love a sparkle. Um, I couldn't, I, I couldn't get it to the level that I wanted for this palette. So I wasn't going to do it. I mean, if it wasn't great, I wasn't going to put it in just because I needed to have a shimmer. So that's coming to in the very near future, but, um, Let's see. Will, will you do your liner in different colors? Yes. So. Who doesn't love that? I mean, the outside is beautiful. I mean, the the Hero Line is like my. It's also my child. I will do it in different colors, but the thing is, I'm working on the formula for creating it in a brown. But it will. We have to change the formula because when you do black, apparently it's just the black ink takes over and. You cannot just like add brown or red or make it a green liner. Oh, so you, you have, have to, to start, start from day. scratch. Right. So we are going to be, we are working on the brown, but um, it's going to have to be like a completely different formula. Of course, it's going to match this. Um, so would you keep use a, a brown on anybody that, on me, for example, yeah. paler, blonde, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, browns rather than blacks? On, Honestly, they're and two they're completely levels. different. Yeah, yeah, they're they're two completely different looks. Um, people were surprised that I started with a black liner, because I'm very much known for my brown liner, and but I also have to I have to understand. You have to understand that when I start my brand, I want to start from the basics as well. So when I think of basic, classic, beautiful like beauty moments, I think of a liquid black liner. So I wanted to start with that first right. and then obviously the brown is coming and so many beautiful things are coming, but I have to start building my brand from, from scratch. When I have used this and I have used this, I've gone along yeah, very, the black and white in looks. a very narrow way mm -hmm. along my top yeah. lash, but I don't know if I should be joining a bottom mm -hmm. line. No, you don't need to do, do a bottom line. So, okay. So. 
a really interesting thing when I do your makeup, and sometimes I remember, sometimes I forget, is when I do liner on Caroline, if you look straight ahead, so Caroline has a very visible lower lash line uh, rim. Is that what it's called? Do I? Yeah. So when I do a liquid liner on Caroline, you have all this white space, which is the rim. So I feel like when I do a brown pencil on her inner waterline or a black, it just like really intensifies her lashes, makes them look like 10 times thicker than having that gap of a waterline. Oh, um, so, Andrew, so very often um, as a baby makeup person, mm -hmm. I would use the neutral waterline pencil. Yeah, which is are the bright saying, one. Well, uh, just a... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I used to use white back mm -hmm. in the day, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I've gone more neutral now. You, you don't even need that. Line. I mean, you can do it on your lower, but I feel like your eyes are very bright. So would you use a brown? I would use a brown. I think brown would be very soft. I mean, I, I'm not saying to go all the way in and rim your eyes, just the top. So doing it oh, on the top, right, right, right. really top just... Top inside, yes, not, not bottom. Not bottom, no. Right. Unless you want to go for that very, like... You want to make your eyes smaller and more narrow and right, more then, feline, then, then, don't then yeah, that. yeah, I don't think that's going right. to really suit you. Do you have an average age of follower? I'm always interested because my average age is 25 to 35. I would say it, that's the main, the main target is like 20s. The youngsters. 20s, but, but it's, not, it's not really just a very young crowd, honestly, because I, I feel like I tend to cater, I try to cater to everyone. To everybody, yeah. Um, You've so I would say 20 to 30s. Why would I? Yeah. Well, because I still get, you know, I get a WhatsApp from looking for old woman aged uh, 50 to 65. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not even going to apply for that yeah. job. That's like, that's a criteria that they give you. Yeah, like that, old yeah. woman, 50 yeah. to 65. No. Don't be doing that. No. That's, see, that's a tip from Caroline. Whoever, <laughs> whoever is trying to work with Caroline, that's not, yeah, Don't that's not the way to go. Woman. Um, what about makeup and is it less is more as you get older or is that for everybody? Okay, so with makeup and less is more and, you know, the topic of how much and how, how little can I get away with, honestly, I think it's very personal. And especially with the access to beauty we have today and the access to how you see makeup being applied and done. I, for example, like if I'm wearing concealer and if I have a shoot and if I'm going day to day, it's a really change on depending on what I'm doing. So basically when, you know, I can get away with wearing more concealer here because I feel like all our interactions are happening indoors. Right and you're not in direct sun and you're not seeing like a lot of the makeup. But for example, when I go to LA, where we're out all the time and we're in daylight and I'm always outside, I, can, I do not wear heavy, heavy, heavy makeup. Not, not that I always do, but I'll wear barely anything because mm -hmm. you're always in someone's face yeah. and there's a the sun and you're outside and you're walking around. The last thing you want is like a heavy layer. Um, but honestly, like there really are no rules to what about to how much the, you apply. So many people message me when I'm talking to my dermatologist or mm -hmm. a cosmetic surgeon about darkness under their eyes. What is your? Do you have a top tip? So covering dark circles under yeah, the, the eyes. Yeah, the darker. Yeah. Okay, so I find that I love concealer. Concealer is like one of my favorite beauty topics. Um, will you be doing lip products? Yes. Oh, yes. And I'm so happy and I'm so excited for doing, for when I do lip products, you're going to love them. Um, so concealer under the eyes. Um, sometimes you really shouldn't match your skin tone. You have to match what's going on under the eyes. So if you're more blue, if you're more green, you really want something that's more peachy. So you want a peachy concealer. And as soon as you put it on, it's automatically going to neutralize with that darkness and look like your skin tone. Right. Do so, you always go paler though? You know when somebody, when, yeah. when you do all the different colors and yeah, 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 foundations yeah. and what have you, always go paler under the eyes? Uh, I mean, I think it's always pretty to highlight under the eyes. So I would go a bit lighter under the eyes, but it really depends. If sometimes if I'm color correcting, just adding that peach will automatically give the illusion that I've added the highlight as well. Um, Do you have a favorite brand? Unrelated, but what's your coffee order? Um, 
Coconut latte. Mine's almond milk, almond milk latte and hers is coconut. I always have mm -hmm. almond milk. Always have coconut milk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I've been hoarding so many lipsticks and lip pencils lately. You can never have too many. I agree. I feel I like li lipsticks, lipstick is that one makeup product that you can just keep. I don't want to say keep buying, but it's very exciting. It and it's, is. I mean, I love, I love lipstick and honestly working on my lip colors, I feel like has been the most fun. I mean, the, you know, working on all these colors, um, has been incredible too, but working on the lipsticks, I think maybe because it's closer to painting for me because I'm mixing liquids and I'm mixing different colors. Literally, so, so you have a palette. And you're literally mixing. Yeah. I'm like them. adding adding the colors and I'm like, no, I want this lipstick more pink. I want this more orange. I want this more. So lipsticks are, they're special. And then special. trying them all on the different skin tones to see that the same color is going to come out differently on different lips. Exactly. Exactly. Like it, it really, lipstick is very personal, but it's also very fun because the colors are going to look so different. And not in a bad way, you know, no. like you're going to get completely different colors on different people. Um, <laughs> I mean, I love a lip tint, you know, someone said I have pretty lip color, but I love, I love a lip tint. Have you got um, a lip tint on now? I think it's gone now, but what I always... What do you, which one do you have? I can't say. <laughs> but I have... I, I like a lip gloss. I have something that I'm working on. I like a really good lip gloss. Yeah. Will your makeup be clean and cruelty free? Yeah, it's for sure cruelty free. It's vegan, so definitely like all of that. Um, working on making it as clean as possible, but my brand is vegan and cruelty free. What does that say? Can you can you use the palette wet? Like spray something, some setting spray um, or a brush. Yes. So I have I've actually demonstrated how to use the palette wet. Uh, you can spray Fix Plus, but the only thing is. That keep in mind that it's a cardboard palette. So if you spray directly on it, you can ruin the cardboard. It can like shift a bit. So the best way is to spray a brush. So I would, I would pick product up actually. So take some product and then spray the brush and then apply it. Ah. So that way you don't ruin the palette. You don't ruin like the cardboard. Um, so this is, this is That's the best better. way. Yeah. Do you always use a fixing spray? I don't actually. No. And I always forget to use setting spray. I feel like <laughs> I No, I don't feel like it's an essential, honestly. A lot of people live by it and, oh, yes. and they have to finish their face with a setting spray. But um I just don't think it's like a complete, complete essential. For me, for me. Um But I, I do feel the the difference when I wear it, honestly. So it's it's completely a preference of wearing setting spray or not. I hope you enjoyed my video with Hindash. This was just part one. We have part two coming along very soon. Don't forget to subscribe and so we'll be able to let you know when it's coming.